What's good, Knicks fans? Coming at you with another video. I'm gonna react my football man. I'm gonna react to Woj talking about the Knicks. I know the Lakers showing right now, but they Woj talking about the Knicks. And let's talk Knicks. Come on, man. With that, and we'll get Jalen a little bit later in this hour. In the meantime, there's one other enormous piece of business, if you will, one other enormous shoe in the league that we are waiting to drop, and its name is Donovan Mitchell. Where do we stand right this minute, Woj, as far as Donovan Mitchell and trade possibilities out of Utah? Utah and New York talked last week, and I think the Jazz got a sense of what New York might be willing to do, and it's not just one particular deal. I think there's options, and it's almost like a sliding scale, that the more the more players you put in a deal, the less draft picks you want to give up. The more draft uh, draft assets you put in a deal, you, you, you want to put less players in. Yep. If you're the Jazz, I want the players in, I want the picks in. That's they where it agree. starts. They got everything. And so I think for the Jazz, they go out now around the league and see what else is out there for Donovan Mitchell. Which is nothing. Get a sense of what the market is, what teams are willing to do. No and I do think the Nets or the Knicks and the Jazz will re-engage so uh, here now. at some point. Maybe it's this it week, maybe it's next week, maybe it's in two or three weeks. But the Jazz are not going to necessarily move quickly. The Rudy Gobert talks, you know, that was over a period of time this summer. And once Minnesota stepped up with the package they did, that was an easy deal for the Jazz to do. Uh, New York is motivated. They're motivated to get Donovan Mitchell. But I think they're also motivated to not just give up everything to get them. They've got four of their own unprotected first round picks. Now, people talk about seven or eight picks. In a lot of those picks, they are um, can, uh, about 14. They're protected. Yeah, yeah protected. They're conditional protected picks. Yeah, conditional protected picks that are coming from places like Detroit, Washington. I don't think the Jazz value those okay, the way. They certainly well. don't value those the way they do New York's unprotected picks. Those have value. Tim put together a pretty good list historically of what an unprotected first-round pick from the Knicks can get you. <laughs> Jamal Murray, LaMarcus Aldridge, Joakim Noah, Gordon Hayward, all yeah. drafted with unprotected Knicks picks from trades. Yeah, uh, I mean, that, the, the, there is no more damning uh, suggestion you can make about a franchise than I'm dying to get their draft picks. <laughs> that's, that's what you really want. You want the Knicks draft picks. I'm putting, putting in two. Four, by the way. Like, why are you putting at me? <laughs> Alan covers the Knicks locally here, so you're, you're very plugged into that situation. How about how? How significant would you describe it for the franchise to get Donovan Mitchell? Well, it, it, a GM once told me, my job is to find better players than you. Like that every day. That's what you're trying to do, no matter what your roster looks like. He's the better player than they have right now. So that's your, you, if you can do that, it's talent acquisition. They have to find a talented player. They have it. They've been yeah, but I won't give everything up. And Rose is right. And I'll keep it the same way. I'll make them play our game. And... I'll set the, if you want more players, you have to get less picks. If you want more picks, you have to get less players. And I'll keep it as that. And I'll just run with it. And if Danny Ainge don't want to do it, even until the, the regular season, then we have to wait until the regular season. And I like that option better because we can see what we have on the team and see who who's more valuable in terms of the young players. And we can... We can go from there. I think it's easier to do that than There's just to getting sell the farm. Well, yeah, so so uh, get rid of all these picks and all these player, these young players. Hell no, like I don't want to do that, bro. Uh, front court players. Carmelo Anthony is a great player. Be true, all bro. All that That's stuff. What's, they haven't had an All Star guard since Allen Houston in 2001. That's yeah. how long you have to go back, and they really haven't had a a high scoring great dynamic guard like that. You can go all the way back to maybe even Walt Clyde Frazier. Like it's been that long. So they yeah, need to find players like that to get master. better. That's the significance. You know, the idea that it makes them a championship contender, can we just get back in the league? But like, let's do that first. They've right. made the playoffs five times in 20 years, four times in the last 10. Just become a competitive team, and then you can just build from there. Quick final word, Woj, go. Well, just look at the, the ground the Knicks have to make up in their own division. Philadelphia, Boston, yeah. Toronto, like they've got a ways to go just to get competitive with that group. But Thanks still, like I said, uh, I'd rather uh, stick to what I want the want the market to be for Donovan Mitchell because you're the one setting the market. Everybody else, they're not going to do anything to break up their team because Danny Ainge is going to want everything from 
any other team also. And no other team is going to want to break up their whole team for Donovan Mitchell. So I think just set the terms. If you want this many picks, you got to get this amount of players. Three players, only three players. Uh, uh, Grimes, McBride, uh, and Fournier. Those are only three players I'm willing to, uh, maybe a, a, a camp. These are only players that I'm willing to part with if you want these many picks. Uh, six, seven picks. If you want more players, if you want an OB, if you want to, uh, if you want an OB, you want to uh, quickly, you want a McBride, you want a Cam, and a Fournier, or a Rose, then you have to, you have to get four or five picks only. Four picks. I'll, I'll settle with four picks, so they more enticed by the other option of getting Grimes in the six picks. And it's just my opinion, bro. I don't, I don't think they Jazz is in the uh, has some leverage, but not all the leverage because I think Knicks has more leverage. Simply the fact we're the only team that's able to get him for what Jazz want. They want a lot of picks. Jazz want a lot of. I'll put my two, my two picks in there. My two, uh, uh not all three. I think Knicks have three of them. I'll put two of our. Um, unprotected picks there. Fuck it. Sorry. Forget it. Two picks. And then put the... And pepper the, the protected picks all around. That way... Uh, and I'll stick like that. But if they want less players, if we can keep a... a maybe a Grimes. Give up a... a, a, a McBride. Cam. And Fournier. Or, or a Rose. I'll put in more picks. I'll put in all three. I'll put three unprotected picks. That way, bro, we don't need that many picks. I mean, we draft second rounders and and establish second rounders in, in the college that's able to help us win now type thing, uh, contribute now. And we're good at picking second rounders. It's a it's a whole process, but I think we should we set the we set the terms for everything. We have the leverage for a lot of this. So we can go into the season with the team we have now and make them sweat it out and say, yo, we, we really have nothing else besides this, what Knicks only, only the Knicks is able to offer. And this is the only big uh, trade offer that we have that actually is worth something. That's the only, that's the only way we win. I don't want, I don't want to be swindled like, like the Jazz. I don't want any of that. All right. See you in the next video.